When you meditate, you get your body in position, your right hand on your left, your back straight, facing forward, closing your eyes. And then you get the mind in position, focused on the breath. Take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body. You remember the breath here is not so much the air coming in and out through the nose, but it's the breath energy in the body that exists on many different levels. The most blatant level, as you're sitting here, is the in and out breath. And ask yourself, where do you feel it most prominently? Focus your attention there. That's getting the mind in position. Now, once the body and mind are in position, then you want to keep them in position. And this is where it gets difficult. The body sitting here without moving, sometimes there's going to be a pain here or numbness there. But you have to not let that be an obstacle. Focus on the parts of the body that you can make comfortable. realizing that all too often the, the numbness and the pain come from the fact that the breath energy in the body is not flowing well. So as soon as the breath gets comfortable, start thinking of that comfort spreading down the spine, out the legs, going down the shoulders, out the arms, out through the fingers, coming in the middle of the chest, going down through the stomach, down through the intestines. In other words, make the most of the breath, its potential to give rise to a sense of well-being in the present moment. And if you can take an interest in the breath, then you find this easier and easier to keep both the body and the mind in position. Now, keeping the mind in position requires three qualities. The first is mindfulness, the ability to remember, to keep something in mind. It's not simply watching things coming and going. You remember to give rise to skillful qualities, and once they're there, you remember to keep them going. So instead of watching things arising and passing away, you make good things arise and you prevent them from passing away. Alertness is what watches what you're actually doing. Watching how the breath is going right now, watching how your mind is going right, right now, and making sure they stay together. If it notices that they're not staying together, this is where you bring in the third quality, which is atapa, or ardency. You really want to do this well, which means if the mind has wandered away, you try to bring it right back right away. You don't say, well, let's let it just wander for a little bit and come back. We've got a whole hour, one minute wandering, won't hurt it. You can't think in that way. We don't even know where to have the whole hour. Who knows what's going to happen in the next moment? So if the mind is wanted off, you bring it right back. If it stays with the breath, okay, that's when ardency focuses on trying to be as sensitive as possible to how the breathing feels, and as sensitive to which different ways you can adjust the breath to make it more and more comfortable, and what you can do with that sense of comfort. It's in this area where the qualities of mindfulness, ardency, and alertness, which are associated with mindfulness practice, turn into the factors of jhana, or right concentration. This is you're evaluating the breath. And then once the breath is comfortable, then you evaluate how to make use of it out of that comfort. In other words, you're developing both concentration and discernment at the same time. You're developing the mind, all kinds of good qualities in the mind. And these are things you want to protect. And John Mann used to say, the good qualities in the mind are, can't be distinguished from the mind. If they could be distinguished, somebody would steal them or somebody might try to sell them. But because they're buried there in the mind, 
Nobody else can destroy them. Nobody else can take them away. The problem is that we can destroy them, because the mind is so changeable and so quick to change. Just because there's some mindfulness and alertness and ardency getting started here doesn't mean that your greed and aversion and delusion can't come in and destroy them, which is why you have to develop qualities to protect them. The Buddha makes a comparison. He says, you're practicing, your, it's like building a fortress on the frontier. You've got enemies all around, so you have to build the fortress so that it's strong, and that the people inside the fortress know how to protect it. And so what have you got? You've got shame and compunction, or the, the moat and the road around the fortress to defend it. In other words, if you the sense of shame here is we're talking about the healthy sense of shame. That's the opposite of shamelessness. In other words, you see some behavior is beneath you and you tell yourself, I'd be ashamed to do that. That kind of shame is good for you. Compunction means seeing that it is possible through your actions to create harm. So you decide you don't want to create the harm. You care about the results of your actions. These two qualities are the road and the moat around the fortress. The wall of the fortress is discernment, and as the Buddha said, it's well plastered so that the enemy can't get any footholds or handholds to climb up the wall. And what holds the fortress up is the, is the main post, which is conviction. Conviction in the Buddha's awakening that through his efforts and through his developing qualities in the human mind, he was able to find true happiness. And the reason this holds everything up is because the message of his awakening is that he can do it, you can do it too. The effort that's put into developing, developing good qualities in the mind is effort well spent. And it is possible to put an end to suffering. So as long as the skillful qualities in the mind are not yet fully developed, as the Buddha said, you can't rest content. You have to keep working, working, working at it. But working at it will be rewarded. That's the message of his awakening. Now protecting the fortress at the gate is the gatekeeper, which is mindfulness. The ability to keep things in mind and to be alert to what's going on. So that when enemies come in, you recognize who the enemies are and you keep them out. When people are friendly to the fortress, come, okay, let them in. In other words, you make sure that greed, inversion, and delusion don't, don't come sneaking in and taking control of the mind. But you're happy to let good qualities come in. If something unskillful does make it past the gatekeeper, then you've got right effort. Those are the soldiers inside the fortress. In other words, they have the desire. When something unskillful arises, you try to abandon it. If skillful things haven't arisen yet, you try to give rise to them. As for unskillful things that haven't begun come into the mind yet, you do your best to prevent them. And when skillful qualities do come, then you do your best to maintain them and develop them. You don't just sit there and watch the enemy come in and take over. You fight them off. Try to make sure that the soldiers and the gatekeeper are well fed. You have stores of food in the, in the fortress. This refers to the different levels of jhana, the right concentration. Like in the first level of concentration, the first jhana, there's directed thought and evaluation. You direct your thoughts to the breath, and then you evaluate how the breath goes, as I explained just now. You evaluate it not just to decide whether it's good or bad, you evaluate it to make it good. And that way it gives rise to a sense of pleasure and rapture. And that's the food. Because as we're practicing, there are lots of things we have to give up. Like right now, you're taking the eight precepts. 
ways in which the mind used to go looking for food outside are suddenly cut off. But you've got better food inside to compensate. If you don't feed the mind with a sense of pleasure, it's not going to stay on the path. It's going to start foraging for food other places. And so when you keep, keep the mind with one object, with a sense of well-being, that's how you keep mindfulness well-fed, the soldiers well-fed, and they can protect your concentration better. So the food gives them energy, and then they protect the food. When you've got this internal fortress like this, then when greed, aversion, and delusion come up, you're in a position where you can fight them off. So build your fortress well. Make sure that it has all the parts of a fortress, and they're all in good shape. So that when you do develop good qualities in the mind, they don't get destroyed. Because as I really said, you see people spending a lot of time practicing, and then all of a sudden they change their minds, they throw it away. And they come back to it and throw it away again, back and forth. It never gets a chance to develop. So remember, the big dangers are not outside, they're inside. But we can also develop inside the qualities to keep us protected. That's one of the pieces of good news in the Buddhist teachings. <laughs>